If you've been around my channel long enough, you've learned one major thing, and that is I'm not an expert in anything, um, especially with my name being 3D Maker Noob, but I'd like to be as good as I need to be in pretty much anything I try, which is why I constantly do different things on this channel while still trying to keep the 3D printing theme intact. During the initial months of the pandemic, when I was at home printing shields 20 hours a day, I had a bit of downtime on the channel and I wanted to use that constructively. And therefore I decided to teach myself how to sculpt in ZBrush because I'm always printing other people's models, which is absolutely awesome, but I'd love to be able to create my own model. So I did, I started teaching myself ZBrush and today I'm going to talk about it. I'm going to talk to you about how I went from doing this to doing something like this. So stick around. This episode is sponsored by Skillshare. About a year ago, Skillshare had sponsored one of my episodes. And after that video, I kept my membership to Skillshare as I found it very useful and, and find myself always going back to it thinking, what else can I learn? Now, for those of you unaware, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on any possible creative outlet you may wish to explore. Now I've used them in the past to learn more about Arduino and Fusion 360. And after doing a quick search, I found that they had a ton of classes on ZBrush. Now I had bought a Wacom Intuos Pro tablet uh, a while back, which I had never used. So I already had access to the main tool I needed for sculpting. Tablets like this cost under $100 nowadays, but I will talk more about the tablet later and why I also moved to a graphics display tablet instead. On Skillshare, I focused on two main classes. The first one being by a guy named James. He has this extremely detailed class which has like 80 videos on it. He goes into detail of ZBrush and I mean all the details, like I have never used ZBrush. So this was the perfect place to start as I learned where everything is on the user interface and more importantly, what everything does. So this is definitely a class I would recommend as it's always better to first learn the basics before diving in like I usually tend to do. Following that, I decided I want to get my hands dirty and create something myself. So I followed along the class uh, of a guy named Christian, who is also the founder of Rueforge Studios. Now the class allows you to create your own skeleton, which is a step-by-step -step process, and in turn, make a miniature model out of it for 3D printing. The class is extremely elaborate and puts into practice all that I had learned from the previous class. Now, apart from that, I was finally sculpting something of my own. The process was extremely rewarding. You follow along and you learn throughout the process, creating a skeleton, which is true to form and also as detailed as possible. Halfway through the class though I decided that I want to put some of what I learned into practice and see if I can sculpt something. I did actually manage to sculpt Frank Noob. Granted in the beginning he looked a lot different. Uh, that was before I actually looked at any classes but eventually um, it, it did turn out quite good and I had printed him on the Prusa Mini and it turned out great for a first sculpt so I, I went and also sculpted a couple of unicorns inspired by the card game Unstable Unicorns. They turned out really great. I was very, very pleased and I was very proud of myself and uh, having printed those as well, I also learned how to split models for multi-material in ZBrush and I felt like I learned a lot but was still far from where I really wanted to be. At this point I was starting to get really comfortable with ZBrush so I went back to my miniature skeleton class on uh, Skillshare to complete the process. A few days later my miniature skeleton was complete. Now I didn't just want to design one skeleton though, I didn't want to just copy something from someone else, I wanted to make it my own so I opted to design five of them, all different, in different poses, with weapons, because I wanted to create a miniature army of uh, skeletons that people could actually print and use, possibly on, uh, on board games. But this wasn't the end of it though, as I spent quite a few days test printing and tweaking my skeletons. There is this learning curve to understand how tolerances work when it comes to SLA printing and sculpting miniatures. See, on ZBrush, a model will look nice and strong, but when you print it, you can see that most of the details that I had spent 
hours if not days working on had completely disappeared. And apart from that, initially I had problems with some parts of the skeletons being too small and some of them lost their heads while removing the supports. So then I started enlarging some parts and inflating others as per the class. The models didn't look that good on ZBrush when viewing at a large scale, but once you print, the detail had changed completely as they were all condensed into a small package. So after lots and lots and lots of test prints, I had finally found an balance and I had finally completed my army to work with. I threw all five skeletons on the SL1 build plate and printed them in uh, Prusa resin. Once cleaned up and cured, then meticulously removed all the supports, um, but very, very, very slowly, because at the end of the day, they are still very fragile, I proceeded to paint them. The process was very easy, but very delicate. I first put on a black base coat on all the skeletons. Then I used some silver paint and using a very small brush, I lightly dusted off the edges of the skeleton as I simply wanted the details to pop. Now using as little paint as possible, it was just about taking my time and running along any edges that I could find and making sure I highlight the model itself. Now bear in mind, these models are 28 millimeters tall, so they're absolutely tiny. So if I had to scale them up for FDM printing, it would look a lot different as the same details will be inflated and might not look as good as they should. This is one of the things I've learned on the ZBrush classes because if you want that particular detail, the model has to be quite larger. The end result though was extremely satisfying. Um, knowing that I can finally begin to sculpt my own figures is extremely rewarding and it also gives me more content to provide to you guys and especially my Patreons. Now I had mentioned that I moved away from the Wacom tablet and I want to explain why for those interested. The tablet itself works perfectly fine and it's extremely comfortable. However, it wasn't ideal for me due to two things. First, my hand-eye coordination suffers a lot when I use a tablet that doesn't have a display. Having my hand move in one place while my eyes are pointing to a completely different direction just throws me off completely. Now technically that is a good thing to reduce strain on your neck as you don't have to always stare down at a display tablet but I felt my position on sculpting was suffering quite a lot for it. The second thing I didn't particularly like is the feel and sound of the pen tip against the tablet surface. It's not gonna affect majority of people, but in my case, and this is just me, it's a case of misophonia. I just, I cannot stand that sound and that feel. So that, that just was a hindrance to me. Therefore, I went and bought myself an XP Pen Artist Pro 15.6, which is a graphics tablet, which has been perfect for me as it tackles all the issues I had. In hindsight though, I, I have to be honest, I probably should have went with a larger screen, but that will come in the future. I, I'm, I'm not in a rush for it. But if, if you guys are ever interested in full reviews of tablets, please do let me know. I can always put my noob twist on them. Skillshare have been kind enough to also sponsor this episode, which I'm very grateful for. As to be completely honest, I would have recommended them anyway this this video was about me learning through Skillshare but by having them as sponsors the first 1,000 of my subscribers and viewers to click on the link in the video description will get a two-month free trial of premium membership in order to explore their creativity these lessons can help you stay inspired express yourself and introduce you to a community of millions so explore new skills deepen existing passion and just get lost in creativity at the end of the day what you learn today may well be your true calling and you never know you might make a career out of it now if you guys enjoy stuff like this enjoy me doing more sculpting i i will be i'm actually working on 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 uh, Miguel Odoni at the moment he's a work in progress there's lots more work that i need to do um to complete him it's going to be awesome um and i can't wait to share it with you guys if you want to know more about sculpting or how i'm progressing in my self teaching methods please let me know and we can do a follow-up video in a couple of weeks or a couple of months time in the meantime i want to thank skillshare uh for sponsoring this episode i really appreciate it so make sure you guys check them out i also want to thank my patrons for supporting me uh and this channel and if you have any questions or comments please leave them in the comment section below and while you're there if one of the 70 percent of viewers who are not subscribed to the channel yet still enjoy the awesome content that I produce, um, please, please subscribe. I mean, it would mean the world to me. I need to get to the 100,000 subscribers, uh, possibly before I die. So yeah, that is it from you guys. Thank you very much for watching. As always, 
Happy making, guys.